Hi guys, and welcome back to another thrilling installment of Roblox. We're gonna play a murder game, it looks like. It did look like something very bad has happened. I certainly was not expecting this. I did not even imagine that Hifumi would be murdered. No way. Murdered? You're not serious, are you? He's not really dead, is he? Here we go. The little adorable bear is going to tell us it's murder time. A body has been discovered. After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. Time for an investigation. What the? That was the body discovery announcement. The body discovery announcement. When three or more people discover a body after a murder, that's what plays. And since we just heard it, that means... Hmm. It must mean... He fooled me. Someone killed him. One of us. One of us. And look at that. When Celeste said that, she pointed to something. Something on the floor. Something that had also been on the floor after the last two surprise attacks. Another hammer. Justice Hammer 3. And it's even bigger than the other two. Just as they suspected. One strike from that, and you are finished. Then the killer... There can be no doubt. The suspicious individual. Going by what Hifumi called him. The culprit must be... Robo Justice. Whoever's hiding in that costume is the one that killed Hifumi. But wait. You saw him on the third floor, right? Running back into the hall. So how did he end up in the nurse's office? You're not saying that they, like, teleported or something, right? Are you okay with this? We can figure that out that later. Right now, we have to tell the others. You're right. So then, then, shall we go? <sighs> Hina, snap out of it. Huh? huh? Are, are you okay, Hina? Sorry. Sorry, I'm not sure I can move right now. I'm feeling kind of... This is a problem. We can't just leave Hina here alone. Okay then, I'll go get everyone. You stay here with Hina. Very well. I'll leave it to you then. Okay, I'll be back soon. I tried to sound confident and upbeat, but I still hadn't stopped trembling from what I'd just been through. Everyone else is already on the third floor. I have to hurry. This is where everyone was chasing after the suspicious individual. Where was he headed? Celeste, what's wrong? That was rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs so he headed further down into the hallway, and then disappeared. He ran off going further down the hallway. Way into the back of the hallway? Okay, well he went this way then. Where the fuck is he? Where are you? Creepy... Robo Justice man. I'm guessing it's not Robo Justice that did the killing, by the way. That would be, uh, that would make no sense. Because he couldn't have possibly have been there. So, that leaves Psychic or Kyoko. As far as I can tell, there's nobody here. But still, I feel some kind of presence. Yeah, I'm sure I can feel someone's presence. This presence. It's coming from over there, in the back. I leapt through the doorway. And when I did, I found... Another nightmare. The second nightmare of the day was waiting there to greet me. Oh, fuck me. There, in a pool of his own blood... ...was Taka. Dead. So we have two murders. If Fumi's body discovered in the nurse's office. Taka's body discovered in the equipment room. I was witness to two nightmares. One right after the other. No. They weren't nightmares. This is harsh reality. The true nightmare is this reality. The reality I have to face every day. But still. Why is this happening?
Another hammer. Now it's just his hammer four, and it's even bigger than before. If there's a is that suspicious individual responsible for killing Taka too? Taka. Damn it. Why did this happen? So we know that Byakia, Sakura, Celeste, Hina are all innocent. They're out the picture completely. It can only be Kyoko or um, fucking Psychic Man, whose name I forget. Damn it. Why did this happen? Toko? Don't tell me. Toko too? Relax. She just passed out when she saw the blood. The blood? Oh, that's right. When Toko is, um, Toko, she has a fear of blood, huh? We've tried everything to get her to wake up, but no luck. Just leave her be for now. It's like you said, I should just leave her alone for now. However, but why is it Justice Hammer 4? Huh? What do you mean? Hmm. Celeste was attacked with Justice Hammer 1, then Hifumi was hit with Justice Hammer 2. But this time it was Justice Hammer 4. What happened to number 3? Ah. Uh, what? What's the matter? Well, you mentioned Justice Hammer 3, you just reminded me. What? Out with it. Do you know something? Actually, Taka's not the only one that's been killed. Hifumi's dead too. What? Hey! Hifumi's been killed? Yeah. I see. Which is why you came to get us. Then we better go check it out. Damn. Of course, come on! Otherwise, way, just leave uh, Toko on the floor. So Sakura, Byakuya and I rushed out of the physics lab. But as soon as we were at the physics lab... Oh. Ah! Cele Celeste, aren't you supposed to be waiting in the nurse's office? <laughs> Something has uh, come up. Hmm. Yeah, I heard. Ifumi is dead, right? Indeed. But that is not all. It is uh, gone. What's gone? It has disappeared. Disappeared? <laughs> Ifumi's body has disappeared! What? what? What did you say? What are you talking about? It's disappeared. Don't be ridiculous. Are you serious? What? what the heck is happening here? Hey! Everyone, back to the nurse's office! I practically leapt down the stairs, nearly losing my balance. I reached the nurse's office completely out of breath. I couldn't believe my eyes. Hifumi's body was there just a few minutes earlier. It just disappeared? Me and Celeste went to the bathroom! We were gone for like a minute, and then when we got back... Indeed. This must be the work of the culprit. They must have come and carried the body away. They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around frightened and confused. Okay. We're all going to die here. We're all going to die, just like those guys did. What, what did you say? I don't believe this. I don't believe a body would just disappear. Why? First there were two murders, and now one of the bodies has been taken. This is unnatural. Huh? Hold on, you mean... Two murders? Yeah. Tack has been killed. We found him in the equipment room. No way! It can't be! Taka too? It can't be! It can't be! No! Hina. Hina, calm down. We're all gonna die. All of us, they're gonna kill all of us! <laughs> then, who might the next target be? Toko? Huh? What? I completely forgot. She's still unconscious in the equipment room. Well. You left her at the scene of the crime? We didn't have a choice. She passed out and she refused to wake up. Huh? So, she is still unconscious? Damn. Wait, so you knew she was still up there and you said nothing? Why? <laughs> that annoying little insect that clings to me wherever I go. We'd be better off without her. Bastard. You bastard! <laughs> Calm down. You forgot about her, didn't you? You have no right to blame me. Everyone, stop fighting. Right now, we need to hurry back. Huh? I can't take this anymore. I don't want anyone else to die! Damn. Byakuya, if something's happened to Toko, I'll never forgive you. <laughs> we shot out the nurse's office and bolted up the stairs heading back to the third floor. We ran back to the equipment room at full speed. And when we got there... Toko! The body's gone too. So... Th oh my fucking god. <laughs> there's only two suspects! That's what's annoying me, guys! Like, there's only two suspects! It's... 
there's only two suspects. It's it's Kyoko or Psychic Guy, whose name I always forget because he's been so insignificant until this point. So presumably, it's going to be really bad. Pretzel, you're a very non-Papia, but you need to stop eating cardboard by my feet that everyone can hear on the microphone. Okay, Papia? 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 There you go. Good girl. It's okay. Me and Chrism are now sharing an office, and she is working alongside me now, and it's very numb, and Pretzel needs to stop being... There was something very different here. It was gone. Taka's body, which should have been right there, had disappeared. This is... This can't be happening. Were you hallucinating all this or something? No, it's not a hallucination. I know I saw it before. And what I'm seeing now isn't what I saw before. Huh? What are you saying? Taka disappeared too? Stop talking. Stop saying disappeared. It didn't just vanish into thin air. Obviously whoever did this has hidden the body. But why would they do that? <laughs> I couldn't possibly begin to imagine. Oh, anyway, our costume suspect is clearly continuing his crime spree. We gotta hurry and catch him before he kills all of us! Not possible. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about that. Huh? Hmm. Think about it. Who could possibly be responsible for killing and hiding these dead bodies? Hmm. When Hifumi's death cry went up, everyone here was together on the third floor. So. After that, we split into two groups. Hmm. And now this time, you all came here as a group from the nurse's office. In other words, the only ones who could have done this are Hiro and Kyoko, who are still missing. Hold on a second. Kyoko has an alibi for when Celeste and Hifumi were attacked. There's no question that she was in the dining hall with us. Hmm. You seem very adamant about defending her. Perhaps you are in love? That's, that's not it at all. That's well, fine. anyway... Yes, I do accept Kyoko's alibi. Let's Which see. means the suspicious individual we're looking for can be none other than Hiro. Hmm. Which further means there will be no more murders. The regulations are clear about that. Oh, that's right. There's a rule that says you can only kill a maximum of two people. That's right. As long as that rule is in place, there will be no more. There won't be a third murder. If they were to break that rule. Shing. I'd mince ya! Mince you without a second thought! Mince ya, grind ya, turn ya into paste! By the way, did you know that fish paste can also prefer to shellfish like shrimp or crabs? Hmm. Indeed. Let's so, see. since two people have been killed, there is no possibility of any more. Perhaps. You knew that from the beginning, didn't you, Byakya? Which meant, means you knew Toko was never in danger. Hmm. It still meant it when I said we'd be better off without her, though. In other anyway, words. with that in mind, we can now relax and search for the two missing bodies. The two missing bodies. Two people have been killed and their bodies have been hidden. The only ones with an alibi, and the only one who could have done it, is Hero. But is he really the killer? And what about Kyoko? If she's not involved in the case, where did she go? What? Hey, Makoto, what's the matter? Oh, it's nothing. Hm. Whatever. We need to find these bodies, or our little narrative here can't move forward. So Very well. Then let us split up and begin searching. But... <laughs> there is no need to be afraid. No more murders will take place during this case. I know that. I mean, I, I think I do, but... You know. If you're still nervous, I'll come with you. Huh? Okay, thank you. Hmm. No need to thank me. <laughs> then let's get moving. Yell out if you find anything. Biakia left the equipment room, followed by the others. I had to try and find the two missing bodies. Well, I guess they're not in there, since they put me outside the room. Let's drop a save after all that shit went down. I guess we've got a lot of ground of exploration to cover here, guys, and try and find the missing bodies, unless someone finds them first. The game does seem to do that often, like, have a character be like, Oh yeah, I found something! Oh boy! Um, art room first, I guess. That's where we found that really creepy picture as well. Right. Huh? The door must be locked. Why is the door locked? That's weird. 
Right, so where would you get rid of a body? The trash? The uh, dumpster rat? I can't see them putting them in the classrooms, that's too just generic. And that's just the toilets and shit, right? Oh, there's the rec room. I guess we should check the rec room. Nope. It, surely it must be also on this floor, because, like... How would they have got the body out of there? Like, I guess it could be on the second floor. Okay, this floor, there is a body on this floor, okay. So, I guess I'll chuck everything. It could be in that big machine in the physics room, actually. Is all the graffiti in these rooms, like, by Monokuma, by the way? <gasps> Makoto. Come on. Why are you just standing there? We need to get to the repository. Huh, you mean... Indeed. I found them. Hifumi and Taki's bodies have both been hidden in the repository. Goodbye. I've already told Hina and Sakura. We'll go on ahead. Their bodies were in the repository? What the fuck is a repository? I actually don't know what a repository is. I guess it must be where the garbage goes? What the fuck is a repository? It says I can't leave this floor, so... Am I being an idiot? Oh. Well, I know where to go. It must be the little... The repository must be the little room off the art room that I couldn't get into. Are the bodies in here somewhere? Up ahead is the repository. The doorknob turned. I guess it's unlocked. Then I have no choice but to go inside. Why was it locked 10 seconds ago? That's weird. So I opened the door, and when I entered, I saw... You're gonna see bodies, like every other fucking time! Also, who's strong enough to carry uh, Hifumi's body? Like, I don't think either of them are. The two bodies had disappeared were right there. The smell of blood made me gag. What I saw before my eyes was unquestionable, unavoidable unwavering reality. And then I heard the announcement for a second time. A body has been discovered! After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin! And so here we are! With further ado, let me give you all the next Monokuma file! I was going to hand them out when you found the bodies the first time, but I thought something might happen. What? It was really hard to resist, but turns out I was right! Stop, stop. Just hand it over already. Punishment now, make sure to investigate with all your you. mental might. Prepare for the class trial. See okay, you see you later! Hmm. Well then, now we found the bodies, all that left to uncover is the culprit. What the heck? Hold on! How can you be so calm? I mean, they're dead, you know? That's dead! Gone forever! They're never coming back! Awful! This is just too awful! Hina suddenly burst into tears. She clutched at her Fuma's lifeless body. Who, who would do this? Your voice acting for me now. Why? Why? Large wet tears fell from her eyes. The tears landed on Hifumi's cheeks. If this were some world of make believe, that might have been when Hifumi opened his eyes. But this wasn't a movie. What the fuck? This wasn't... She's alive again? Where? Holy Where shit, her is alive! Cold. So cold. What the fuck? Is winter coming? Hifumi, wake up! Huh? Uh, that's right. I remember now. Hope's peak. Come on, you gotta wake up! I remember everything before I met you all. I met you all. <laughs> His memories are blending together. He has nothing useful to offer us. Oh, the light, it's... Reaching out to me. Oh shit, is he gonna die? Like the 
tale of a heart. That's interesting. It means that Monokuma has no idea if someone's dead or not, if he's alive. Hey, Fumi! Who was it? Who attacked you? Who tried to kill you? It was a guy in a robot suit. We've already established that. Who killed what if... What if one of, what if Kyoko killed one and the other guy killed one too? That would be fucking crazy. That's right. I remember their name. Y Yasu. It was Yasuhiro. I mean, that's fairly incriminating. He just died again. His eyes closed and they never opened again. Oh well, death for the second time. That was a kind of fucking lame. I want him to be all right, you know. Absolute undeniable death. Anyway, so Yasuhiro is fucking not looking good. I'm assuming he didn't do it because that's too obvious, but it looks guilty as fuck. There was no second miracle. Reality set in again. Hm. This isn't some stereotypical fantasy world. Tears can't restore a person's vitality. Honestly. You have no tears, do you? No blood in your veins. No calcium in your bones. At least you have your meat. Stop talking. You're just angry. Going out of his way to return just to leave us with those unnecessary dying words. Now this game's become exceedingly boring. He said, yes, a hero, right? Yes, a hero, Hakagaru. That is the only person he could have been referring to. So in other and with words... that, the case is solved. Assaulting people and even killing Taka and Hifumi, and then going so far as to hide their bodies. A criminal that hides his face behind a mask and uses a bunch of giant wooden hammers. Is that what hero is? What is there is still I can't forgive him! No way can I ever forgive him! To kill two of our friends! Anyway, it's about time we track down the culprits in our little life or death game here. Shh. Although this time, it's not all that life or death. The trial will conclude without much trouble. Indeed. Yes, he does look at that the way. It's going to begin again. We have to go through this one more time. I have to accept it. I have no choice but to go through with this to make sure everyone survives. I just have to do it! Investigation mode activated, guys. First, I better check the Monokuma farm. The victims were Hifumi Yamada and Kiyotaka Ishimaru. The cause of death to each was a blow to the head. It's thought they were both killed with a similar weapon. That's it. Very strange. Yeah, it's pretty strange. We got way less information this time than before. <sighs> there is no problem. After all, the events of this case unfolded before our very eyes. We should know more about what happened than the Monokuma file could anyway. Hmm. Maybe. Celeste was meant to be a victim too. There's something else that's bothering me. Someone else has been missing for quite a while. Are you talking about Kyoka? Perhaps. Without a doubt, she has the alibi for when Celeste and Hifumi were attacked. But what if the killer wasn't acting alone? What if they had an accomplice? An accomplice? An accomplice? What are you doing here? Don't be rude! I'm here to answer your question! What question? You're talking about accomplices, right? I'm pretty sure I explained it before, didn't I? During the first class trial. Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear. If there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. So in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? In other words... So basically, you can be an accomplice if you want, but there's no gratification in it. So then... So you're saying nobody worked together this time either? Hey! Sorry, um... can't answer that. Would it strip the free exchange of information between you guys? I just want to make sure you don't forget, no matter how much you might assist in a murder. Phew. Only one black can graduate. An accomplice gets nothing. So in other words... Then we only need to figure out who the one that one blackened is that did the killing, right? Just like normal. Well. Okay, let me take this opportunity to clarify the whole shebang. In the class trial, what you need to determine is Extreme. the one true blackened who devised the murder plot and put it into action. The true blackened, so it's just one person. Well now. That's enough for explainifying. Now it's down to the final battle between all of you and the blackened. Good luck to all the contestants. So there can only be one blackened, and the accomplice would benefit. And I can't see any way Kyoko would be connected to this case, after all. <laughs> you may be right. Um... If that's true, then Kyoko, where are you? However... As long as she's not connected to the case, it doesn't matter. Let's get back to the investigation. Indeed. I have absolutely no doubt that Hiro is responsible. But for the time being, I suppose it can't hurt to pursue further information. So, you know, um... don't you think we should consider a certain someone a suspect just in case? 
I'm talking about the murderous fiend! Just like Jack! What? Oh. You. When did you... <laughs> I've been looking all over for you, Master. When I woke up, you were nowhere to be found! Anyway, you there, milk sack swimmer girl. Huh? Milk sack? Why do I gotta be a suspect? What the heck? Well, I, I mean, you are a serial killer. What the so, what? <laughs> I'm like a special guest suspect every time? I have an alibi, you know. Hmm. She's right about that. When we heard it from scream, she was with me. And when the body disappeared, she was lying unconscious in the equipment room. Plus, Taka's body aside, I can't imagine any way she'll be able to move uh, Fumi's body. Yep. Besides, I calculate every move I make. I'm not gonna kill someone, everyone knows what I look like! They don't call me the murderous speed for nothing! What are you saying? That's not the kind of thing you should be bragging about! Let's see. On another topic, shouldn't we post a guard by their bodies like before? We can't have them disappearing again. So then. Hina and I can handle that. You don't mind, do you, Hina? Hmm. Sure, I'd be totally useless on the investigation anyway! It's all clear. Then that's that. Let's begin. Right. This whole thing is so strange. All but one of us have an alibi, so figuring out who did it should be obvious, right? But, maybe it's just me, but I don't think it's gonna be as straightforward as it seems. Maybe they time-traveled or some shit, I don't fucking know, there's that weird device. Right, body. Taka, he'll never move again. According to Monokuma file, he died from below to the head. Yeah. We found Justice Hammer fall near his body in the equipment room, is that what was used to kill him? And there's a tarp laid out under his body. Did the killer use this to move Taka's body? That way, there wouldn't be any blood left behind when the body was moved. Blue tarp has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Yafumi's big cold body is laying on the floor. His really big body. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to move someone so big? From the nurse's office where he was discovered to hear the repository. All the way from the first to the third. And all without anyone noticing it. How the hell? It's no good, I just don't get it. I can't think about it. Later. For now, I have to finish investigating Hifumi himself. If I remember correctly, Hifumi's fatal injury was also a blow to the head. Probably from Justice Hammer 3, which was laying on the floor in the nurse's office. Wait. Something's off about his body. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's... different. Something about Hifumi's body in the nurse's office versus his body right now. That's it. His glasses. When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But now they're completely clean. Does this mean that someone wiped his glasses off? But who would do that, and why? Okay, that's another truth bullet. We need to find his glasses, obviously. There are hammers of all different sizes hanging on the wall, though some are more like mallets. Could the Justice hammers have been designed using these as a model? Either way, all the hammers have been obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. Wait. For some reason, this one hammer isn't dirty at all, and it's wet? Did someone wash it recently? Okay, so that's a spotless hammer. What is this? A dolly. It doesn't have a handle. I saw this in the art room before. I guess it's used to move statues around? It's kind of awkward, but if you bend down, it's not too hard to use. They use that to move Hifumi's body. Wasn't this in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? And look at the wheel. There's a blood stain on it. So the blood in the wheel of the dolly that was moved from the equipment room to the suppository. Rep suppository? Ha ha ha! Ed butts on the brain. What's the explanation for that? Okay, so they use that to move the bodies around. Presumably. Hmm. There are many aspects to this incident this time. Too many, to be honest. Considering that it may be good to look back on everything that's happened. So then. Would you like my help? Yeah, go on, Sakura. Mm. This morning, only four of us met up in the dining hall. Hina, Kyoko, you, and myself. We waited for the others, but nobody showed up, so we decided to go and look for them. Mm. It was around 8 o'clock when we began our search. Soon after we split up, Kyoko disappeared. Mm. After that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room on the third floor, then quickly came and got you and me. According to Celeste, she was attacked by a suspicious individual and lay unconscious for about an hour. In other words, she was attacked an hour before we found her meaning just after 7 o'clock. <clears throat> Based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. It was Robo-Justice. It also became clear that this Robo-Justice had dragged Hifumi away. Huh. After meeting up with Toko and Biakia, we began searching for the costumed assailant. 
We found that injured Hifumi in the library on the second floor. We took him down to the nurse's office on the first floor and then resumed our search. But not long after leaving the nurse's office... Based on Celeste's claims, we made it back to the second floor where we split up and began searching. Then right after that, hmm. Celeste screamed. This time she apparently seen the suspect on the third floor. Hearing her screams, we clicking made our way to the third floor. Did Celeste do this? She's like, controlling the entire thing. Doesn't mean that she could have killed Hifumi though, because she was with us. Celeste is suspicious here though, right? I think that's suspicious. That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, this strange costume man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. Yeah, I mean, we'll skip through this. We've all seen this before. Mm. And then... We heard a scream, but we don't know what it was. They say it's Hifumi, but again, Celeste told us it was Hifumi. At that point, we decided to split up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went to the nurse's office. Meanwhile, you, Byakuya, and Toko pursued the suspect on the third floor. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi's corpse, which is also when we heard the body discovery announcement play. I left Celeste and Hina alone and headed back to the third floor to tell the others what had happened. Oh, but at the same time, we discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. I'm just going to read this in my normal voice because doing Sakura's voice for 20 minutes is going to kill me. Which means Hifumi and Taka's bodies were discovered right around the same time. Because I remember hearing the body discovery announcement play right for fun Taka. So that's a recap of everything. And that's when I showed up and told you and Byakuya that Hifumi had been killed, right? Then you and me, Byakuya, all headed back down to the nurse's office leaving behind Toko, who had fainted. But as soon as we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived to tell us something very unusual. Again, Celeste is driving this whole thing. We hurried back to the nurse's office to discover that her, the corpse was in fact gone. Hmm. And then we rushed back. Okay, I'm going to skip through this, guys. We get the IGS. We, we know what happened. We don't need like flashbacks to tell us exactly what happened here. Hmm. Celeste then said she found the bodies too. Celeste is definitely fucking massively suspicious here. However. Regardless, that is interesting. So, um... Mikado, I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. What is it? Hmm. After Fumi and Taka's bodies appeared, we split up to look around, right? I was really scared, so me and Sakura stuck together. But... When we came right to the repository to, you know, look around. When we got here, the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. It was locked? Hmm. And we came here as soon as the search started, so there's no way someone could have beat us to here. So if that's true, then who locked it? Why is it unlocked now? I wonder the same thing. The door was locked when the search for the bodies began, but now it's wide open. There might be some secret lurking in there. It's Celeste, because she found the bodies. It's fucking suspicious as fuck. But I'll probably have to leave this area to figure it out. Anything else in here that's worth looking at? Uh, I may as well look at the TV, but that's nothing, right? Right, I may as well talk to Byakuya as well. There it is. Do you think Hero really did it? Hmm. I don't see how anyone else could think otherwise. When the attacks and murders, disappearances all happened, every one of us had an alibi. The last thing Ifumi said when he died. Yeah, he said Hero's name. So, in other words... There is no room to suspect anyone else. Okay, but if he did do it, why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Hmm. Maybe he thought no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered. Because he's the fool of the century, you see. I mean, he is kind of dumb. But do you really think he's enough to explain it? I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. What? And that's it? That's all that bothers you about the case? Well, no, there are a few other things. Like, why did the killer try and hide the bodies? They probably figured if we couldn't find the bodies, we couldn't complete our investigation. But if that's the case, we found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? <laughs> Again, it comes back to the fact the culprit is a moron. Is that really all there is to it? The other thing that bothers me is... Why they bother killing two people? What? Because all the rule says if you kill someone and get away with it, you graduate, right? So if you're the killer, your number one priority is not getting caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances you'll get find out. I see. Hold on. Perhaps... I see. So what? that's what that means. Is everything okay? That's enough. Don't talk to me as if we're friends. What's with the attitude suddenly? <laughs> but 
You have my appreciation. Goodbye. Thanks to you, I might have fun with this after all. His mysterious words hung in the air as he left the repository. He talked as if he'd figured something out. But if he did, wouldn't it have killed him to tell me what it is? Okay. So, Celeste... I'm, I'm actually saying Celeste did this. Um, although, how does she fake the picture? I don't see any way to lock it from the art room. Huh. The door can only be locked from the inside of the repository, which makes me wonder... Hina and Sakura confirmed the door was locked after we started looking for the missing bodies. And the door is designed so it can only be locked from inside the repository. In other words, when Hina checked it, someone had already gone in the repository and locked the door. When they were done, they unlocked it and left, which is why it's unlocked now. But Hina claims there's no way someone could have beaten them to the repository. So that certain someone... Must have been really fast? There's got to be a clue around here somewhere. Maybe I should check somewhere else. There are some places I already know about. First the nurse's office where Hifumi was round, then the equipment room where Taka was found. Right, let's go. Might as well go to the equipment room first, seeing as uh, Taka's body was like right by us up here. It's very interesting though. This one's I, I've really like. I mean, I didn't get the last one either. It was just lucky that the the case sort of kind of went that way, you know. Otherwise, Mondo would have got away with it. Cause I I had him pegged as a nice guy, Mondo. You know what I mean? But then he uh, smashed Hiro's brains in. So you know. Again, I wouldn't have suspected Leon either, though. You know what I mean? So there you go. Right. There's some kind of tire marking going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. That reminds me about the dolly in the repository. So yeah. Yeah, of course. We They use the dolly. We know this. Tekka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Okay. That's a really obvious thing we already knew. But even if the dolly was used to move Tekka's body, what about Hifumi? Hifumi's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with the dolly, there's no way it can get up to the third floor. That's still a total mystery. That is a mystery. Murder weapon is still here. I'm a sleeping right here where the killer carried the body away. I'm so pissed. I made such an ultimately rare event. Thank you for sharing that with us, uh, Jill. Ah, oh, this top. I feel like I've seen it before, and it just recently, too. Oh, we got a Monokuma coin for that. Three Monokuma coins. Well, why don't I get, like, a, a hint for that? I mean, that should be a triple, though, right? What the fuck is that? This isn't important to the case, I just need to forget about it. There's nothing here. This room is irrelevant. Obviously the camera as well, but there's nothing important, right? Yeah. That's all there is, there's nothing. Okay, we know this already, yeah. So, I guess we'll just head down. Did I get any truth about this, there? Anyway, let's, uh... Teleport down to the nurse's office, I guess. And have a look in there, see where Taka's body was... Not Taka's body, um, Hifumi's body was found. Okay. Get our sleuthing shoes on, guys. What's in here? Celeste, who I strongly suspect is a murderess. Justice Hammer 3, the one that was used to kill Afumi. Someone moved the body but left the weapon behind, again. What are you investigating, Celeste? <laughs> I am not investigating anything, precisely speaking. I am simply going around seeing if Hero might be hiding somewhere. Mm. What about you? Oh, you know, I'm just checking this and that. The main thing on my mind is how someone could have moved Afumi's body. Let's see. How Afumi was moved, eh? When it disappeared, you were supposed to be in here in the nurse's office, right? Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Hina was not feeling well, so I stayed behind to look after her. But she seemed to be getting worse, so I took her to the bathroom. And when you got back, the body was gone? I reckon it was Celeste. It must be Celeste. She somehow faked the photograph with the robot guy and Hifumi, okay? And tried to kill Hifumi, and in the initial struggle, failed, okay? Then... We, she pretended she'd seen the person in the robot suit to get us looking around a wild goose chase. It's definitely Celeste, without a fucking doubt. Mm. We could not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. Yeah, Hina said the same thing. So then, the killer was able to get in and move Hifumi's body in that short amount of time? Indeed. It would seem so. To carry off someone as big as Hifumi in only a couple of minutes is... I can't think of it as anything less than impossible. Mm. 
There's got to be something else. Oh, yeah, what's in this? Uh, his glasses, obviously. A refrigerator. I wonder if there's anything to drink inside. There's a bunch of blood packets in here for blood transfusions, I guess. It doesn't help me, though. I'm not a vampire. Well, that, that was a helpful statement. Because I already knew you weren't a fucking vampire. Because you're not a fucking vampire. This is it. There's nothing else in here, right? Oh, what's this? Oh, the trash. His glasses are going to be in the trash. It's just a normal trash can. There's something inside, though. It's a small handkerchief. It's a glass cleaning cloth. And it's got some cartoon character on it. It's also covered in blood. Oh. Uh, did you find something? Yeah, there's a cleaning cloth in the trash can. Huh? A cleaning cloth? And it's all bloody. Whoever this belonged to must have used it to wipe some blood. But who would need to do something like that? <sighs> I haven't the slightest idea. It's obviously Hifumis because he likes anime and it's got anime on it, you fucking idiots! Okay, we got the glasses cleaning cloth. We obviously know. What am I missing? I don't think I'm missing anything else. Hmm. So, this is where you've been. I've been looking for you. You have? I wanted to thank you for what you did. Not that you meant to, but you ended up making this little game of ours very interesting indeed. Uh, you should go to Hero's Room. Oh, and let me give you this. This is the note Hero wrote to get us all to meet up, right? Hmm. You remember well. Well, the penmanship was pretty remarkable, so it left an impression. It's all clear anyway, now. this makes it clear, right? This is a trap. What is? <laughs> Things grow ever more exciting. What are you talking about? I've already repaid my debt. I don't do any more explanation. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, great. So, we're going to Hero's room. Something bad's... Is Hero going to be dead? Or is he be tied up or something? This will be really... This is all really fucking interesting. Like, I had no idea what to expect from this game this time around. I still think Celeste, though. Number one... Number one suspect, Celeste. Where the fuck is Hero's room? Neon... Yes, you're here. Here we go. The door is unlocked. I guess I can go inside. Yaki, I did say to go look. It might be a great idea, but it's, I'm going to take the plunge. Is he going to be dead too? This is Hero's room. They're all kind of weird stuff in here. Where do you even get it all from? More importantly, he still hasn't turned up. Which means he can't really complain if I don't get the permission to search his room, right? I soundlessly checked the bathroom. There's nothing in here. It's pretty grungy, though. How does the bathroom even get this dirty? Right, there's going to be something obviously important in here. Boxes. I think there's something in the cardboard box. It's blueprints for something and... Some things made out of looks like cardboard, plastic and plaster? Is this Robo-Justice? And it's in Hero's room? But wait, these blueprints, something about them bothers me. Huh. It's because the handwriting isn't Hero's handwriting. And it's been set up. It's a normal bed. Great. Camera, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's nothing else in here, is there? I think there's absolutely fuck all, in fact. Okay, guess we're leaving. Uh, Makoto, big news! Big news! What's wrong? We found Kyoko! What? Is she okay? Where is she? Wait, I wasn't done. There's more big news! Just a second! Robo Justice showed up too! Robo Justice? Hmm. It's Hero wearing the costume! Okay. Anyway, as soon as you can, head to the pool on the second floor! To think Hiro and Kyoko will turn up at the same time. Anyway, I have to head to the pool. I ran to the pool as fast as I could. What the fuck has happened here? Kyoko and... I mean... Man, I've had the worst day. Hiro? Um, Hiro? Huh? Yeah? Oh, hey, Duh? Makoto. Who else would it be? Um, that's a good question. Huh? Uh, what? Why, do I look like this? What, did someone come along and remodel me while I was sleeping? 
Was it the Illuminati? What the fuck is going on? Right. I found Hero. He was jammed into the pool room locker. Looked like he was fast asleep, so I kicked him and he woke up. Don't be mean. I still can't believe you kicked me. Could be a little more gentle about it, like, I don't know, caress my face or something. What? That's creepy. Anyway, Kyoko, where have you been all this time? You just disappeared all of a sudden without a trace. Wow. There was something I had to check up on. What do you mean? Never mind. I can't never mind. It's never mind. Hey. More importantly, she says that, but does she have any idea? Does she know people think she might be spying for the mastermind? And? First of all, Hero, you need to explain to us why you're dressed like that. I mean... Oh, uh, well, I mean, I, I have no idea. One second I was asleep, don't even know how that happened, then I woke up, and then I was here. Hmm. I don't care. Do something about that costume, it pins me to look at you. Huh? Well, um, I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help? <laughs> why would you make something like that you can't take off by yourself? You didn't make this stupid friggin' thing! There's a clasp on the back that's keeping you from getting it off. It looks pretty sturdy. I don't think you can get it off on your own. We don't really have a choice. Let's help him. It took everyone's help, but slowly we were able to get Hero out the suit. Someone's tried to frame Hero. It took a few minutes, but eventually we all got the pieces off. <laughs> Whoa, free at last! Hmm. Isn't it kind of weird how perfectly the suit fits Hero? So More then. to the point, nobody but Hero would be able to wear that costume. Uh, um... Wait, what? Hold on a sec. Honestly. Don't bother trying to act innocent. The blueprints were in your room as well. In other words, it is obvious to everyone that you made this costume. That's true. I saw the blueprints myself. Yeah, me too. Could it be... That is obvious! The one who put this costume on and went around attacking everyone That's was Hero! <sighs> Shall we tie him up and gag him? Just the Good worst. idea! We wouldn't want him killing anyone else! What? What? Tie me up? I don't think it's him. I'm sure it's Celeste. Hold on, guys. I think we're going a little too far. That's right. He may be a suspect, but he deserves fair treatment. Hmm. Yeah, I mean... Uh, attacking? Um... Blueprints? I have no idea what you guys are talking about. What the heck? You can't talk your way out of this! It's been decided! You killed them! Please. What? Killed who? I have no idea what you're talking about. There may be a fake hero running around. What are you saying? You're the only one who can wear this costume. So who else could possibly be the costumed attacker? We don't even know there was a costume attacker. The only thing we've got is a photograph that Celeste could have taken fucking days ago of him wearing the costume for fun or some shit like that. And then it could even be Mondo in the costume just acting around with Ifumi. Celeste took the picture and Celeste has planned this all out as some elaborate fucking plan to fuck this guy over. How do you know I'm the only one? Maybe you should try it on yourself before you convict me. Okay. Fine, if you're going to be a jerk about it, I will. Without missing a bit. A beat, I think. Hina started putting on the Robo Justice costume. Huh. See, look. See, I mean, come on. I'm blind as a bat in here. Can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised you got anywhere in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. And not to mention, you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's not a very nice thing to say. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, it's not like I made it. I just got caught up in the moment. Well, either way, now we know for sure, right? I mean, it seems pretty clear that nobody but Hero could have fit into this dumb costume. In a half, Hina took the suit back off again. Uh, well, now you're all out of excuses. Uh, um... Now you see, because you're a girl, if it was another guy, then... <laughs> Makoto, go ahead. Okay. Against my will, I pick the pieces up off the floor and try putting them on. It's no good, the arms are too long. There's no way I can wear this. Just a second. See, I told you it was impossible! <laughs> you are absolutely right. It seems this costume was made to fit Hero's body. Exactly. And you're a dressmaker. You fucking suspicious bitch. But... Then there's another costume. They must have one that looks the same, but, but fits them. Honestly. If you insist on this line of defense, then show us some evidence. What the heck? Evidence? <laughs> you claim there is another suit, yes. Then you must find it and show it to us. <laughs> what the heck? Who cares? He was the only one without an alibi during the whole thing anyway! That's Which is how we know it was him! He- Celeste lied about the times. We- Celeste killed those guys- killed fucking Taka ages ago as well, I bet. What? I mean, is it really that true? I have no idea what's been happening. Could someone, like, tell me? Robo Justice costume is a truth bullet. What the heck? You don't mind telling me what's going on. How am I supposed to understand? 
I think I figured out someone's been killed, right? Hey, Makoto, who was it? Well, two people were killed, Taka and Ifumi. Just the Why are you freaking out? You did it! Please. I don't think he did. If those two are the ones that were killed... How about that? That's it, I know who did it! So then. You may as well tell us then. Hmm. Taka and Ifumi were fighting over Alter Ego, right? Which means Alter Ego so and Alter Hero must have done it! Correct. I see. That's unfortunate. Please. What the heck? Stop trying to trick us! Just admit that you did it, okay? Uh, um... I'm telling you, you got it all wrong. Oh, I know. So that note. Then. Note? Uh, Last night, um... someone slipped a weird note on my door. And here's what it said. I found a hole. Maybe we can use it to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. Mm. But the last thing I remember is going to the rec room. Then for some reason, I fell asleep. Hey. The real killer probably drugged me or something. Just the worst. Not a chance. So... No, hold on. He could be onto something. The nurse's office did have the chemicals that could do that. Really? I told you, someone's trying to set me up. A secret passage, a chance to escape? Someone wrote all that to trick me. Uh, Even if that's true, you must be one dumb fish to bite every piece of bait that floats in front of you. Uh, well, after being trapped here so long, even if you know it's a lie, you still gotta check, right? Yeah. They prayed on my desire to get out of here. They deceived me. Uh, I still don't buy it. Don't be mean. Well, you should buy it. Just a second. Okay, then show us the note. Hmm. Well, pleasure. I have it right here in my, um, pocket. No way. Looks like I lost it. Uh, yeah, sure. Please. please, you gotta believe me. I wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> As I said before, if you want us to believe you, you must produce evidence. Can you show us the note? I have no particular issue with what you claim, but if you want to believe you, give us a reason. Uh, what the heck? For serious? Right, so it's definitely Celeste, we know. Now then, should we resume our investigation? There's no time to waste between the class before the class trial begins. Why do we need to keep investigating? We already know who did it! What the heck? Why? Why did you kill them? Tell us, Hero! Uh, it's like I said. Just the worst. Was it really to get the money Monokuma offered us? Yeah, that must be it. He must be totally broken, that's why! Please. Wait, that's a false accusation. Someone help me! What are you saying? Just be thankful we haven't found and gagged you! Hmm. If you have time to yell and carry on, you have time to search for your evidence, right? What? What? You're right. I need to look for the second suit in that note. Feet don't fail me now. I guess I better get back to guard duty. I was gonna ask Toko, er, uh, Genocide Jack to switch with me. Hmm. But if she and Sakura got into a fight, we'd have a catastrophe on our hands. Well, bye! One by one, everyone peeled away. Makoto. I want you to help me with the investigation. It would seem... Looks like I got a late start on this one, so we need to make up some ground. Sure, I don't mind helping, but can you promise me something? Later, when you have the time, will you tell me why you disappeared? Why is that? No. To reject me so simply. Anyway. I need your help. You don't mind, do you? Okay. Shall we Thanks. go? Thanks. Shall we? It's obviously Celeste. Celeste is guilty. Okay. So, Makoto, first I'd like to examine the corpses. Examine the corpses? I can't believe I'm hearing that from a girl the same age as me. Correct. Dead bodies don't lie, you know. They tell the truth far more easily than living. Hey. Wouldn't you agree? How am I supposed to answer? Anyway... We have to hurry before the class trial begins again. You're right. Okay then, show me where the bodies are. They're in the repository. Then I guess we should head that way for now. Jesus Christ. This investigation has gone on a while, guys. I might have to cut this video short soon. Which I don't really want to do before the start of the class trial, but... Mm. It's only really 10 minutes left in the video max, so we'll see. Into the repository we go. Hifumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to go rigid. But only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and prodding the bodies. I knew it. The Monokuma fire was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were smooth. She was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel a little more comfortable. Makoto, I found something. You did? Hey. You remember the wristwatch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did? Woo. Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Do you dislike other people that much? No, that's not it. Anyway, you said he had a watch? So then. Take a look. It's 
broken. You can see the hands aren't moving, right? It's most likely broke when he had his encounter with the assailant. And if you notice, the hands are broken just past six o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after six? That's right. But last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Yeah, so use the time there. In other words... So it worked at 10 o'clock last night. It couldn't have been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning it must have happened at 6 this morning. Yeah, so Celeste lied. And that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. It appears to be gripping something. You're right, there's something white in there. Makoto. Can you try and pry it out? Me? Because... Rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited to this kind of manual labor. Right? Okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice-cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. After some effort, I was finally able to free the object from his tightly clenched fist. A piece of paper? A piece of paper? Hey. Was that all he had in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? Is that right? I wonder about that. Kyoko then turned to Hifumi's body. So then... Let's check Hifumi's bodies now. Perhaps he's left us a few clues of his own. The biggest problem I have right now... Oh, okay, I have to talk to her. What the fuck? We already know this shit. What the fuck? Yeah, why is he playing this cutscene again? Go away. Go away. Kyoko. Investigate. So, did you find anything? Indeed. I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper? That's he right. He me had it hidden on him. Hidden. Indeed. He stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume he hid it on purpose, you see. In his pants. Wait, so you... Why is that? It was just his pants. Not like his socks or something. I don't know what that means. Hey. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, Makoto. Open it up. When I think of how it was stuffed down his pants, it's like... It better be important, Ifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. A note? I found a hole. Maybe we can use it to escape. Monokuma can't... It's the same note that Hiro mentioned. So... That sounds familiar. That's it. The same thing that Hiro said. Then he was telling the truth. However... Although it's not exactly the same, is it? Uh, um... The time is different. Hiro told us his note said to meet at 1am. This note said they wrote to Ifumi asking to meet at 6am. Is that right? Hold on. Just because Ifumi had the note doesn't mean it wasn't meant for him. So... Part of it had been torn off, right? I think there's some likely some meaning there. There's some meaning to part of it being ripped. Could you explain it a little bit more? Think carefully. Hey. Why would he have been clutching the scrap of paper so tightly? I have no idea. So then. What if he wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how would something and how would something important like that become a more mere scrap of paper? That's what you need to answer. That's the other hey. half of the night. I'm more berated, I should tell you the other one thing. The two victims this time definitely had their e-handbooks on them. So the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there's any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying I don't even think about the handbooks this time, right? Is that right? You didn't have to think about them at all. I wouldn't have gone out of the way to mention it. All I said they weren't used to help carry out the murders. There may be a point, however, where a handbook may play a role. A handbook may play a role? I don't think I understand. But if Kiko thinks it's important, I better keep it in mind. Here we go, we got all the evidence. It's Celeste. Are you Celeste is guilty. Are you pumped? It's time for the class trial to begin. Like the bright burst of fireworks. Like the flash of a soul clashing with life and death. And so, with no further ado, everyone please meet at the usual spot. Make your way to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. It would seem... It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You'll have to figure out the rest yourself and come to the proper conclusion. Celeste did it. Celeste did it! It's obviously oh, Celeste! It's obviously Celeste. Maybe that's too obvious, though. I don't know. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this installment of Danganronpa. Trigger Happy Havoc, if you did. Remember to hit that like button, and I will see you for another installment soon. But it'll probably be about a 90-minute episode or so, because it'll be another class trial. The third one! Let's see what unfolds, shall we? And who is guilty, and will be executed. Let's see.